In March of 2016, Forbes released its list of the highest earning retired athletes of 2015. It was no surprise that NBA icon and legend Michael Jordan topped the list, making $110 million that year. Soccer star David Beckham came in second place at $65 million, followed by golfing legend Arnold Palmer with $40 million. However, when many people read the name of the fourth person on the list, it left them confused. A man by the name of Junior Bridgman had earned $32 million that year, allowing him to earn a spot on the list. Aside from the fact that almost no one had a clue who he was, the crazier part about this was the year in which he retired. Unlike Michael Jordan, who retired in 2003, David Beckham in 2013, and Arnold Palmer in 2006, Junior Bridgman retired all the way back in 1987. That's more than 30 years ago, long before players were getting paid ridiculous amounts of money like they are today. What makes this feat quite impressive is the sheer fact that this meant that he had less time than the other three athletes to acquire such a large sum of money. A fairly difficult task when considering that he was earning less money due to a mixture of the era he was playing in and inflation. Regardless of this, many fans today still ponder on the big question that has left everyone stunned. If he has been out of the game for so many years, how was he able to earn so much money? And for an NBA player who was unknown to most people, it's a fair question to ask. Well, here's the thing. Unlike most professional athletes, Junior Bridgman surprisingly made a majority of his money outside of sports. Simply put, after retiring from the NBA, he made a wise investment that made him millions of dollars years after his time spent in the league. With that being said, let's begin. Welcome to NBA Insider. Throughout NBA history, there have been plenty of players and associates of the league who have received outrageous amounts of money. Many fans today are familiar with most of these players, including the likes of LeBron James, Magic Johnson, Shaquille O'Neal, Kobe Bryant, and of course the legend himself, Michael Jordan. But what makes these players so memorable in relation to money? Well, the fact of the matter is, these individuals were not only known for being NBA superstars on the court, but also very successful businessmen off of it. However, what if you were told that there was once an NBA player who, following his career, went on to become equally, if not more wealthy than all of the players mentioned? In fact, this former player, despite never being an all-star in his entire NBA career, has a higher net worth than almost every other player in NBA history besides Michael Jordan and Magic Johnson, to name a few. What makes this fact even more interesting is the circumstances surrounding his wealth. Meet Ulysses Lee Bridgman, better known by his nickname, Junior. Born on September 17, 1953, Junior Bridgman grew up in East Chicago, Indiana. His parents, Ulysses Sr. and Dolores, were blue-collar workers. His mother was a homemaker and his father worked in a steel mill. In fact, Growing up as a kid, Junior Bridgman's father had managed to get him a job working in the mills. During his time there, his father made sure to give him the hardest work humanly possible. By showing him the difficulty of surviving on minimum wage due to a lack of education, his father had hopes of persuading him to attend school. After all, he did not want for his son to follow in his footsteps. Just like any other father, he wanted the best for him. Of course, back in the early 1950s, education was the best. You see, growing up as a young teen, Bridgman's parents had installed strong beliefs into him. A perfect example of this were the three basic rules they strictly followed in their household. One, go to church. Two, go to school and don't bring home any bad grades. 
three. If you wanted to play for a sports team, whether you played or not, you just couldn't quit. If you were the last person on the team, you were going to be there the whole year supporting your teammates. Due to this, from a very early age, Junior showed an incredible gift for religion, education, and of course, basketball. Although he was considered a formidable athlete and maintained a high GPA, Bridgman did not anticipate himself playing basketball beyond high school. However, as a senior for the 1971 East Chicago Washington High School basketball team, he finally realized his full potential as a basketball player. That same year, Junior helped lead his team to an Indiana State basketball championship with an undefeated record of 29-0. Following this, Bridgman attended the University of Louisville on a basketball scholarship where he starred as a 6'5 guard slash forward and earned the Missouri Valley Conference Player of the Year title not once, but twice. Then, in 1975, after helping the Cardinals reach the Final Four and completing his bachelor's degree in psychology, Bridgman contemplated attending law school, an accomplishment he would still achieve during the first four summers of his NBA career. Regardless, in the 1975 NBA draft, he would go on to be selected in the first round as the eighth overall pick by the Los Angeles Lakers. However, on June 16, 1975, less than a month after the draft, he was immediately traded to the Milwaukee Bucks alongside fellow NBA draftees Brian Winters, David Myers, and Elmore Smith in exchange for NBA legend Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar will officially become a member of the Los Angeles Lakers. Confirming our exclusive report here of 16 days ago, the Lakers will announce that they have acquired the 28-year-old former UCLA star in exchange for center Elmore Smith, forward guard Brian Winters, and Los Angeles' top two draft choices of this year, UCLA's David Myers and Junior Bridgman of Louisville. Over the course of 10 seasons with the Milwaukee Bucks, including two with the Los Angeles Clippers, Junior played as an outstanding it sixth really man. It really is a fun time of the year. You play 82 games, and it's kind of the uh, uh, icing on top of the cake, uh, so to speak. It's the things pick up the whole step, the intensity picks up. Uh, everybody, the fans, is it, are just super or overly involved and it's just a fun time uh, of the year and especially if you can accomplish your goals of winning it's just a major accomplishment. During his long and successful NBA career he averaged 13.6 points, 3.5 rebounds and 2.4 assists per game. He shot nearly 48 percent from the floor, 84 percent from the free throw line and had a career total of 11,517 points. What makes these stats so outstanding was the fact that he did most of it while coming off of the bench. You see, Bridgman only played as a starter in 105 of the 711 games he played in a Bucks uniform. Despite this, he was still able to score in double figures for eight straight seasons while consistently being mentioned among the league's highest scoring non-starters. He has been a large presence this afternoon. Junior Bridgman from the corner, 100 to 78. Hard shot offensively. Junior Bridgman's basket makes it 102 to 80. Foul ball here awesome. against Maynard. Bridgman, who's had a hot hand here early in the fourth quarter, hits again. Six points. They'll make it 14 points. Not only was he the highest scorer off the bench for most of his career. But during his time with Milwaukee, he led the franchise to win eight division titles, including seven in a row, and played in three Eastern Conference series before spending his final two years in Los Angeles alongside the LA Clippers. He was the league's top scoring sixth man in 1978, averaging 15.5 points per game. Then in the 1979 season, he averaged 17.6 points per game, followed by 16.8 the following year. What's also interesting to note is that he played more games than any player in Milwaukee Bucks history and is among the franchise's all-time leaders in scoring, minutes, steals, field goals made, and attempted. By the end of his career on January 17, 1988, Bridgman would go on to have his number two jersey retired by the Milwaukee Bucks as one of the greatest sixth men in its history.
Despite all of these amazing accomplishments, what's most interesting about this NBA figure was the fact that his greatest achievements and success would come not from the NBA's courts, but rather from his second career as an entrepreneur in the food and restaurant business. You see, for an athlete who played as a professional basketball player in the mid-1970s and early 80s, Junior Bridgman was way ahead of his time. The NBA in his era was light years away from today's age of big money. During his time, NBA players didn't have multi-million dollar contracts. Simply put, if you weren't a superstar in the league, you didn't get rich from player salaries. In fact, most of the players that made a lot of money during their careers received fortunes from other sources of income, including sponsorships, commercials, and other endorsement deals. Due to this, many people were stunned when they learned that Junior Bridgman, the retired NBA player who played most of his games while coming off of the bench, was well on his way to becoming a billionaire. The main question on everyone's mind was, how did an NBA player who retired from the league in 1987 create such a ridiculous amount of money? Well, you see, back in 1985, while he was still playing for the Los Angeles Clippers, Bridgman received his highest salary, which was just $350,000. That's roughly $800,000 in today's money. When we compare that to today's player salaries, it's a clearly ridiculously low amount of money, even when adjusted for inflation. In today's NBA, players can sign upwards of $200 million contracts, making Bridgman's NBA salary seem like nothing. At the time, Bridgman knew this money would not last him long after he had retired. So he did what any reasonable person would do when they required more money. He worked. Junior strongly believed in the famous idea of having multiple sources of income. After all, it only made sense. If one had plans for a brighter financial future, then having several income streams sounded much better than relying on the one. So during the offseason, Bridgman would sell insurance at a local firm and work the front desk at a Howard Johnson, filling out forms, answering phone calls, and checking people in as a way of earning extra income. He also served as the head of the NBA Players Union and used his position to learn all he could about business and finance. Although Junior had high hopes of gaining experience in the business world, he would only go on to find out just how little he really knew. In April of 1988, after realizing that his passion for the insurance business was scarce, he decided to take his limited knowledge and began planning for his future by actually learning about business, specifically Wendy's fast food chains. At first, he would spend a lot of his time working at a local Wendy's restaurant while trying his best to learn the true culture of the company. Eventually, he saved up enough money to buy his first Wendy's franchise. Regardless, Bridgman still worked tirelessly doing everything from flipping burgers, working the counter, and mopping the floors. He became so involved in the day-to-day -day operations of the business that it was often hard for customers to differentiate between who the workers were and who the boss was. As a matter of fact, on one occasion, while he was working the line at the restaurant, he noticed a woman looking at him as if she was trying to figure out where she knew him from. The next day, Bridgman was listening to a local radio talk show when a caller spoke saying that she saw former NBA player Junior Bridgman working at a local Wendy's, followed by a rude statement claiming that was the best ex-athletes could do. But Bridgman didn't let this get to him. Instead, he decided to use these harsh statements as his motivation and began working even harder. By the time he retired in 1987, the then 33-year-old owned and invested his money in two more Wendy's franchises. He ended up buying another two, making it a total of five Wendy's locations scattered throughout Milwaukee. After acquiring these franchises, he made his way back to Louisville, where he continued to accumulate even more Wendy's. Despite the fact that it looked like he was doing really well for himself, the truth was, even as the owner, Bridgman was only performing average. You see, in those early years, his best store earned $800,000 gross profit annually, and his worst, about $400,000. In relation to business, gross profit is a company's profit before operating expenses, interest payments, and taxes. This meant that after he deducted the cost associated with making and selling Wendy's products, his locations were only making a few hundred thousand. From a further perspective, those numbers weren't too bad. However, in reality, what many people did not know was that the average gross income for a Wendy's franchise in the Milwaukee area at that time was about $850,000. Not only was his best store $50,000 behind, 
but his worst was literally worth less than half of the average store. For any regular business owner, this would be considered a major failure and would most likely lead to them giving up. But for Junior Bridgman, failure was not an option. In his eyes, he needed to make significant changes in the way he was operating his business. The first step was to reject the idea that Wendy's burgers were good enough to sell themselves. People, on the other hand, proved to be a much more effective investment. Bridgman strongly believed that in order to increase the amount of income his franchises were earning, he would have to concentrate on gaining the trust and respect of his employees, which in turn motivated them to work harder and sell more Wendy's products. Knowing this, he decided to hire better employees and began investing in them as people, helping some of them pay rent while bailing others out of jail. Once they saw how much he cared about them, they started working harder for him. Using his experience from the league, along with a little knowledge from a famous book known as How to Win Friends and Influence People, Bridgman tried to get these employees to understand that they were a team. This meant they worked together as a team, won as a team, and lost as a team. Once everybody bought in and believed that they could be successful, things quickly took a turn for the best. His franchises began to yield above average returns, bringing in millions of dollars each year. Following this, Bridgman used the additional money to purchase even more franchises, and by 2014, he became the second largest Wendy's franchise owner in the world. Today, Bridgman Foods, the private company he founded in 1988, operates over 450 franchises, including 160 Wendy's, 125 Chili's, and much more. In fact, he also recently made an acquisition in Blaze Pizza. As for the five original Wendy's restaurants that started it all, they now bring in more than $1.5 million apiece in annual sales and are the cornerstone of his culinary empire. With more than 450 total franchises, 18,000 employees, and annual revenues totaling roughly $500 million, Junior Bridgman's net worth is said to have been estimated between $200 and $400 million as of 2015. Today, however, the 65-year-old is approaching closer to $800 million. These numbers are nothing compared to what he will be making in the near future, thanks to another investment he recently made. You see, 30 years ago, when he was playing basketball for the Milwaukee Bucks, Junior was trying to find a corporate sponsor for a free summer camp he was organizing. He immediately thought about Coca-Cola. So he went to the local bottler in Milwaukee and asked them if they would get involved and help him. And without hesitation, they said yes. From that point on, Junior Bridgman developed an immediate relationship with the company. Although Coke's commitment to the community was quite impressive, it was actually the tour of the warehouse and distribution facility that earned and triggered Bridgman's interest as both an investor and businessman. So later on, when his restaurants became a huge success, he recalled the great partnership he had with Coca-Cola. Due to this, on April 20th of 2016, Junior took his relationship with Coca-Cola one step further. The company had announced that it had signed a letter of intent to grant Junior status as the president and CEO of their new Heartland Coca-Cola bottling company located in Wichita, Kansas. After selling off some of his franchises, including a couple of Wendy's, Bridgman became the third new independent distributor to join the Coca-Cola family in recent decades. Along with his oldest son, Justin, Bridgman runs all of Coca-Cola operations from most of Kansas, a significant portion of Missouri, a little over half of Illinois, a small part of Nebraska, as well as a production facility in Lenexa. Today, the 65-year-old businessman credits most of his success to reading books and pursuing a career in entrepreneurship. He claims that if he did not follow these two steps, he would not be where he is today. In fact, we have searched and found links to three of his favorite books in the description box below. Feel free to purchase them if you are interested in seeing the books he learned from and enjoyed reading. You'd be surprised at what you can learn. Overall, Junior Bridgman had a solid 12-year NBA career, averaging 13.6 points per game, mostly as a sixth man for the Milwaukee Bucks, and he has been a Hall of Famer in the restaurant franchise business. He built Bridgman Foods into an empire with more than 450 franchises, including Wendy's and Chili's locations. Unlike most NBA players who would have sat back and lived the rest of their lives off of the fortunes they made from the league, Junior Bridgman took the hand that was dealt to him and made good choices that resulted in major accomplishments. Today, the former NBA player is still going stronger than ever before. 
In addition to claiming multiple Hall of Fame honors as a basketball standout, including inductions into the Indiana Basketball Hall of Fame, Bridgman has earned numerous awards as a business leader, including a Wendy's Founders Award and the Junior Achievement Business Hall of Fame. He has been featured on the Black Enterprise list of the nation's largest Black-owned businesses and is listed as one of the top 20 richest Black Americans by Forbes. Quite impressive accomplishments, indeed. In the end, Bridgman's secret to success was not the basketball court. It was education, a message he tirelessly delivers to today's youth. It was the classroom, not a lockdown jump shot, that helped propel him from the streets of Indiana Harbor to unparalleled heights in the business world. Once an average NBA player, making $350,000 in a single NBA season, to becoming one of the largest restaurant franchise operators and entrepreneurs in the country. It's clear that the former NBA standout has demonstrated smart wealth building tactics that have got him to where he is today. In the end, it's safe to say that Junior Bridgman will forever go down as one of the greatest entrepreneurs in NBA history.